Peace and Shalom Israel. Before we start the lesson, hit the notification button because we upload lessons every week and I don't want you to miss a single one of them. Like, comment, subscribe, and if there's a topic you would like for us to cover, we'll see what we can do. So until next time, cue the music. All praise to the Most High of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace to everyone joining me on this program. This is the Fountain of Israel's Bible Studies program. And as always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Holy Sabbath day. Now, the name of our lesson today is the seven abominations to God. Now, of course, it goes back to, you know, the verse that says, you know, six things does the Lord hate and seven are an abomination. So we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about and look at those things that he actually hates. So without any further ado, we're going to jump right in and we're going to start over in Psalm 26, right? So join me over in Psalm 26. Psalm chapter 26. Follow along. And when you get there, please don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, smash that like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Then we're going to jump into Psalm 26 and we're going to read verses. We're going to start at verse 1. We're going to start at verse 1 and we're just going to really read the whole chapter there. Psalm 26. So follow with me. It said, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me, and try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with the vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocency so i will so will i compass thine altar o lord that i may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell all thy wondrous works lord i have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thy honor dwelleth gather not my soul with sinners nor my life with bloody men in whose hands is mischief and right hand is full of bribes but as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place, and in the congregations will I bless the Lord. Okay, so one of the things that we want to remember is the company that we keep. Keep. See, there's a lot of takeaways in this passage here. You know, when the psalmist is writing, you know, he's telling you, hey, I stay away from evil people. I don't congregate, I don't hang with them. I don't do any of that, that, that type of thing. You know, I want to be in your presence. I want to be in the congregation of the righteous. I want, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to do, I'm going to be on the right path, right? So it's really going back to us and we, and, and, and we getting ourselves together, getting ourselves right. Let's touch on it a little bit, okay? And judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my, in, in my integrity. And I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. So I trust him. Okay, I'm going to do this when th it, it doesn't, it, things don't quite look right. It doesn't seem like it's quite working out. But I'm going to trust in what thus says the Lord, right? And it says, examine me, O Lord, and prove me and try my reins in my heart. Okay, talking about down deep inside, right? Okay, try me, look inside. You know where I'm going. You know I believe in you. You know I trust you. You know I love you. Okay, I'm trying to do everything that you command me. Look inside me and know that that's what, I, that's what I'm endeavoring to do, right? And it says, for thy loving kindness is before my eyes and I have walked in thy truth, okay? Because he had that loving kindness. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes it doesn't seem like everything is going well. But sometimes you cannot trust in your eyes sometimes. Sometimes you can't trust in what's going on in the world to know that the Lord is working in the background. That's your trust. That's that trust level, right? 
And if we if we go down a little bit, you know, well at four he says, you know, I have not sat with vain persons, you know, for nothing. They don't they don't do it at all accounts for nothing. Okay, it all accounts for nothing. Okay, so I've I've, I've uh, I have not trusted uh, or with vain persons, right? So let's look at let's let's look at this. Okay, let's go to five. I have hated the congregation of evil doers, and I will not sit with the wicked, right? So he just doesn't hate, you know, uh, bad company corrupts good character, right? So let's look at this one sec. In verse six, I will wash my hands in innocency. So I will compass thy altar, O Lord, okay? That I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. You know, I'm going to say good things. I'm going to praise, oh, how good is the Lord? You know, how good he has been to me, things like that. See, this is this, this is the breakdown, right? Love, Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house. Okay, I love being in your presence. I love being in your house. I love being in your temple, you know, that sort of thing. And the place where thy honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with the sinners, nor my life with bloody men. I don't, don't count me among them. Okay, the, the, don't don't count me amongst the sinners. Okay, don't group me with them. Okay, and whose hands is mischief and their right hand is full of bribes. Okay, these are just evil, wicked people. Okay, but as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. Okay, so that he wants to be one of his, one of the Lord's. And my foot standing in an even place in the congregation will I bless the Lord. Okay, so he said, I, I, I'm on even ground. I don't walk crooked. I'm not, you know, slick. I'm, I, I don't do any of that, right? Okay, so let's keep it going. Okay, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians. Join me all the way in 2 Corinthians. When we get to 2 Corinthians, we're going to want chapter 13, actually. Okay, so, wait a minute. 2 Corinthians. Okay, 13, yeah. So, 2 Corinthians 13, I'm going to, I'm going to do 4 through 11. And 4 says... For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he lived by the power of God. For we also are weak in him. But we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be probate, reprobate. But... I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now, I pray to God that ye do no evil. See, look, 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 look at, do, are we starting to see what the kind of character, the kind of, the, the kind of person that, you know, the Lord wants us to endeavor to be, wants us to strive to be the direction that we should be going in, right? And that, in, in, uh, in the middle of seven, not that we should appear approved, but that you should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and ye are strong. And this also we wish, even your perfection. So we, we wish that you were made perfect, right? We wish that you were perfect. Therefore, I write these things, being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord had given me to edification and not to destruction. So, okay, so he said, look, I'm, I'm telling you this in writing so it comes off a little bit softer or whatever because I, I would, it would be a sharp, you know, basically like a sharp re rebuke. I'm trying to remind you of the things, right? And then 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and of peace shall be with you. Okay, so I, if I was in your presence, it's, it's, it's going to come off differently, okay, if I was present. All right, so you just want to keep that in mind. So now, we're going to go on over to Ephesians. Let's go on over to Ephesians chapter 4, and we're there, okay. We're going to read a lot of, we'll jump around a little bit, but we're going to read a lot of Ephesians, okay. So right now, we're just laying the groundwork. We see how, you know, how, how we're supposed to do, you know, you don't want to just hang out with um, evil reprobate 
people. Otherwise, you would be reprobate, right? So we lead, we're leading up to it. We're, we're getting there, okay? We are getting there. Ephesians 4, and we're going to start at 1, right? Let's read the first seven real quick. It says, I therefore, the prisoner, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. With all the lowliness and meekness, with this long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ, right? So we're gonna skip down. We're gonna skip down a little bit to 13 and then keep going. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Okay, so he's looking at, looking at the type of people, okay? Type of people, a lot of people wanna say, okay, if someone, you know, a sinner, you know, God hates to sin, you know, but he loves the sinner. Nope, Bible doesn't say that, okay? Bible doesn't read that way, all right? It's a particular type of person that we need to become, okay? T particular type of person as long as you're breathing you need to be becoming okay we're not just human beings you need to be a human becoming okay becoming something righteous okay it's not about it's not just staying staying pat how you are it's you're striving you're trying to get better and better and closer and closer i should say you're trying to get closer and closer to the messiah and the further you further away you get from wickedness and sin the closer you get to messiah and the father Keep that in mind. We're gonna jump down to 17, which reads, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as <clears throat> other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. See, understand that. Having the understanding, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Look at, look, look at what he's saying here, okay? Look at what he's saying here. And we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go all the way to 32 there. <clears throat> 19. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man or the old lifestyle, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, at which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands to uh, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Okay, so. You gotta stop sinning, right? Let no corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Okay, pay attention. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. But be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. Okay, so again, it's trying to transform who you are, transform you transform you from the inside out. Okay, so like I said, this, the, if you look at the whole of all these lessons, like 400 videos, 400 lessons on the channel, the whole of it, he's trying for you to become something or someone else, or, or the better version of you, the righteous version of yourself. 
constantly always trying to mold. He is what? The potter and we're the clay, right? So constantly molding you. Constantly. So he can just do it with water. He can put it in water and just let it. And, you're, and you and I, were on a potter's wheel. And he's just molding and crafting us to the type of person he wants to do. Sometimes what happens when we don't get that much water and we kind of dry out and get stubborn and disobedient and hard in our ways. What do you got to do? When clay or rock like that, not a certain clay, it'll fall apart. But, I mean, that's apt as well. When it gets like that, you got to start chiseling. Little bit, it's a little rougher than 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 just water and and on potter's wheel, right? A little rougher than that. See, when it's, when, when we were being watered, it, 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 it we're more malleable, right? We're more malleable. You dry out, you get hard. Oh, now I got now I got a chisel. And now the most high, I got a chisel at you. So the question is, when will you learn? Okay, so let's just let's just keep that in mind when we're doing these things. Okay, now let's go on over to Proverbs six. Let's just keep that in mind. Proverbs 6. Okay, and we're going to do 16 to 19. Proverbs 6. Uh, actually, yeah, 16 to 19. And this is what our lesson is about, right? 16, it says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Okay? That's what this is about. Seven abominations unto the Lord. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that are swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Okay? Seven things, right? Seven things that he find abominable. Seven things he don't particularly care for. Okay? He doesn't, he doesn't like it. And yet we do it. Okay? So we're gonna look at a couple things, okay? Proud look of pride, you know, all that. We're gonna look at that. Let's take a look at it. Okay? Of these things that he hates. So we're gonna look at Psalm 138. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, well, Psalm 138. And just look at verse 6. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the low, lowly. But the proud he knoweth afar off. So you, we know that the Lord, he resists the proud. Okay, we're talking about the, the, the seven things that he hates that are bound. Proud, the pride, the foolish pride, that arrogance. But he is far from someone who is too proud. Too proud. Too much pride in him. Too proud. He's far from that person. He don't get. He, he he does not get around that person. It's like you. Okay, you and I. Um, I don't want to necessarily speak from you, but if someone is so haughty and arrogant and just head so big they can't fit through the door or whatever, I don't particularly like being around that type of person. I don't. I don't. I don't not not making a joke. Not even making a judgment or anything like that because I don't have anyone in particular in mind. Okay. But I've been around people like that, okay? I'm not gonna lie, I said I've never been, I've been around people like that where I just, I'm just uncomfortable being around just because their head is so big, they're just overconfident. There's one thing about being confident, then there's another thing about being arrogant, right? I've been around that. And I don't particularly like being around. So the most high, as he's telling, I, I'm far from that, okay? He resists the proud, he, he don't want no parts of that. Oh, I can't tell. Oh, you know. Oh, you know everything already. Oh, you don't need me. <laughs> you have everything. You know everything. Okay. You don't. You don't need me. Okay. All right then. Best of luck to you. All right. So let's go ahead and keep going. Let's just keep on going. We're gonna go uh, Proverbs thirteen. Okay. Proverbs thirteen. Chapter thirteen. Chapter thirteen. Okay, and we're going to do Proverbs chapter 13, and let me do verse 10. Okay, he said, Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well advised is wisdom. Only by pride, okay, do we understand? We see only by pride is contention. That's, it just rubs people the wrong way. It, it really does. It just... It just rubs people the wrong way. And I, it, hey, like I said, I experienced it. It just rubs people the wrong way. 
and it's going to be contention. It's like you can't tell them anything. All right. So we're going to go ahead and look at a little bit more. Let's see here. Uh, is it looking at my notes here? We're going to go ahead and we're going to look at chapter eight in Proverbs and verse 13, chapter eight in Proverbs and verse 13. And he says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. This is what the this is what the Lord says he hates, right? This is what you know, but we're gonna go ahead, you know, let's look at it over in the strong. Let's, 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 we like to, you know, we like to go deeper every now and again and get a little Proverbs eight. Let's see, and 13. Let's look at this real quick. Okay, let's look at pride. Okay, pride, Hebrew 1344. It's really self-explanatory. Pride, okay, in the Strong's is arrogance, okay? Doesn't like that. The arrogant C is just a derivative of arrogance, so same thing there, okay? Exaltation, majesty, pride, okay? Pump, proud, swelling arrogancy okay all that he doesn't like that okay the evil way the froward okay what is a froward person in the hebrew 84 19 tapuka right perversity perverse thing perverse or fraud okay perverse he doesn't like someone who is perverse like that and he says do i hate see those those are things that, that he hates he does not like it at all okay whatsoever so we're going to keep on going we're going to keep going. We're going to go to Romans chapter 1. Let's go to Romans 1. Romans chapter 1. We're going to go to verse 29 in Romans 1. And 29 says, being filled with, with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. Look at all look, look at all this as he's talking about, okay? We're going to do 30. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. It says that, evil imaginations and stuff, right? inventors of evil things disobedient to parents all these things all these things he just he and I, I i love how you know the bible will tell you the things that he likes and he doesn't like i like i like that being very very clear okay but i want to hone in some of the things that he doesn't like so that you can stay away from that that so you can steer away from that so that you can navigate this world so I, I like it when he's being very, very clear. I don't like this. These are or, or the, the prophets or the, the disciples. They're going to say, these are the things that God doesn't like. These are the things that he hates. I like it clear. Very simple. I don't want it to be ambiguous. And I'm not sure. Like, well, I don't. Well, can I? No, 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 no. This stuff we can see right now and we can understand right now. That's why I like it like this. Okay. That's why I like, you know, my particular pedagogy is to get you to understand. That's the whole, that's the whole point of getting in front, getting in front of you, getting in front of this, this is this podium right here in front of this camera and teaching you something is so that you can understand. My job is not to confuse you. I want you and I both to understand this is what he likes. This is what he doesn't like. All right, that's I, I love it when it's like that. Just say it how it is. We can look behind the words. You know how we do it. Okay, I love that. Let's continue. Okay, let's go to James chapter four. I'm gonna keep going. James chapter four. Seven abominations unto God. So, in four, we're gonna read five through seven. And five says, "Do you think that the scriptures say in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us?" lusted to envy but he giveth more grace wherefore he said god resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble 
You think the spirit that he gave, you know that 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 spirit, you know, of the wickedness or lust or the wrong kind. If you're married, okay, relax. But the wrong kind, okay? The covetousness, the lasciviousness, and all that. You that you think that's the spirit that he gave? He didn't give you that spirit. That's you. That's up to you to exercise that out of you. Okay? He didn't he, he didn't give you that. But he gave it more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisted the Paul, but give grace unto the humble. You humble, you know, I don't know everything, Lord. I'm not perfect. You don't be like David. Confess your faults to him. Confess it. Just be honest. I'd like you to stand up and be accountable. This type of person he wants to be, the things that he hates. That, that way you can avoid, I wanna, we want to break it down so you can avoid it. You can avoid this. You're humble, he gives more grace to you. He draws near to the humble person. Look at what he did. Um, every, every time when, when David, this, the reason why David was, is so coveted, okay? Because he wasn't even the first king. He wasn't even the first king. That was Saul, right? But because when he's wrong, he owned up to it. Read the Psalms. Oh, I was wrong. When 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 what? When first uh, uh, when Nathan came up to him in Samuel's and said, "You're that man. You're wrong." What was David's attitude? Yeah, he, yes, he got punished. I I get it. He, yeah, yes, he did. He got punished. He still owned up to it. Question is, when you mess up and you're wrong and you sin against the Most High, do you own up to it? He resists the pride. Do you own up to it? That's the difference. Let's keep going. Okay? We're in James 4. We did uh, 4, the read 7. Let's see. Submit in 7. It says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay? So submit. Like I said, you don't have to confess it to me. But you, you, you need to confess it to the Most High. You need to confess it to the Messiah. You need to bring your prayers to him. You, you, go, you go in your secret place. But you be a hundred percent honest. Own all of it. Then he draws near to you. You try to hold something back. Well, you know, I did wrong, but it's not that wrong. No, no, no. I sinned against you. Don't don't qualify. I I sinned against you. I I was wrong. For what I did, I deserve death and hell. But I'm praying for your mercy. I'm praying for your long suffering. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't want him to resist you. I want you and I to not have pride block the grace and push us farther and further and further away from the most high, from the most high. So from James, we're gonna go to Jeremiah 43. Jeremiah 43, let's see. Okay, Jeremiah 43, I'm just gonna want the first three verses. And one it says, and it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people, all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, even all these words. Then spake Azariah the son of Hoshadiah, Hoshaya, I'm sorry, Hoshaya, two different lines, and Yohanan the son of Korea, and all the proud men, saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God has not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, said it thee on against us, for to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captives into Babylon. So Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces and all the people obeyed not the voice of the Lord to dwell in the land of Judah. Okay, you don't want to listen. You don't want to listen. 
you want to be all proud. Okay, that's you want to be all proud. Go do your own thing. You know better. Okay, I don't. I don't want to skip that with the Lord talking about. Well, they wouldn't send it directly to. In their estimation, they wouldn't send directly to the Most High, but they they were I'm saying to Jeremiah. He, he didn't say that. He he don't want us to do that. You know. Now we're gonna do this other thing. Okay. 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 Well, someone's trying to tell you. Okay. All right then. Let's go ahead and talk about the lying tongue. Okay, so that, that was pride. We were dealing with pride, okay? So that was one of the things that the Lord hated. So let's go ahead and deal with the lying tongue, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and deal with the lying tongue. So we're gonna go to James 3. We're gonna start out, make our way back to the lying tongue. We're gonna get through the things that he hated, okay? Lying tongue. So James 3, I'm gonna start at six, right? 6 through 13. He says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth defile the whole body, and set it on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poisons. Therewith bless we the Lord God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Okay, listen, listen, listen to what he's saying here. He says, on the one hand, we want to bless God. On the other hand, we want to curse man, right? And 10, out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of the good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Okay, so he said, I, I, I don't like this duality. I don't like this dichotomy here. You know, how, how can on the one hand, it's like I see some, I see some people and they are, um, you know, the most high this and the most high that and Yeshua and Yahweh Shah and all this other stuff on one minute. And then the next minute you see them post and all of a sudden they're cursing people out. They're going crazy. They just, they're just losing their mind. How do you do? And see, that's why people question your character that's why they question because it's like you are showing them two different things and like which one is like more consistent i've seen it a lot of times i've seen it one minute they are cur they're holier than that one minute they're like oh, oh lord the most high he blessed me and this and that and all praises and all that all that the pious they're all, all that and then the next minute they're cursing people out. Their mouth is all filthy. They're tearing people down. Telling people who's going to get in, who's not going to get in. Who's cursed and who's not. Who's evil, oh, you're wicked. Man, just passing, just boom, 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 passing judgment. Just going absolutely crazy. I'm not saying, and don't get me wrong. Believe me, I'm not into the whole... Passive, just oh, oh kumbaya. I'm, I'm not that kind of guy. But I do know that there's certain things in your characters that should be consistent, at least pretty consistent. And every now, if you step outside of that, and you you know you got to do the things you got to do. You know, that's it. It's like okay, it's like for instance, I'll give you an example. You can be a very peaceful type of person, right? Very, very, very peaceful, and. You have, say you have a weapon at home or whatever, and you're very generally mild-mannered, peaceful kind of guy. And then someone breaks into your house and you got the drop on them. And they trying to bring you harm, trying to bring your, your, your spouse harm, trying to bring your children harm. Guess what? You, you flip the switch and then you're somebody else. That doesn't make, that doesn't make you evil, doesn't make you violent, doesn't make you, no. But you could bring violence to that person. That doesn't make you a violent person. Doesn't make you someone who look, walks about looking 
to start trouble. So I'm not saying. So I'm not saying. I'm you know. I'm not saying that there's not two sides of us and all that. I I know that. But which one is more consistent? Which one that if someone was a character witness of you, what would they say? Are you this type of person? Or are you that type of person? Or would they be like, I don't know. I've seen it. I've seen it a lot. Okay. I have seen it. Okay. Let's keep this going. We read the 13th, so we're going to go to Psalm. Okay. We're going to go back to Psalm. And when we go there, we're going to go to Psalm 10. Okay. We're going to go to Psalm 10. And when we get there, I want the first seven verses, right? Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth pers persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire and blessed the, the covetous, the, the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. Oh, he hates them, right? The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffed at them. He's a haughty, he's a, you know, he got his chest all sticking out. He said, he has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Because that's what people, that's, that's a, what a person with a lying tongue, that's what they do. That's their specialty. That is precisely what they do. They're proud. This, this one right here, in, the, in this particular passage, you get both of them. They're proud and they lie. Just say anything to get their way, to get the upper hand, to get advantage. Not to edify, to get advantage, to gain what status over you, to get what money out of you, to hold something over you, or what. Uh, See, just using their words for pervert, perverseness and deceitfulness, right? Look at that. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. So you get the pride, you get the pride and the lying. Both of them the most high hates. Let's keep it going. Okay? Let's keep it going. Still dealing with this, 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 this lying tongue. Proverbs 21 and 6. Proverbs 21 and 6. Okay. And verse 6 says, The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Okay. It's kind of like what you think, um, let's see, let's do this commercially or whatever. Um, it's like if you get some sort of like, you know, pyramid scheme or something like that, right? Where, you know, the early investors, their advantage is that everybody who come behind them, that's how they get their money. And then, of course, at the end, the people who come in later and, and pay to do this and do that or whatever, they get left holding the bag. I mean, they ain't going to ever make any money, right? But it's designed that way. So the people who lie to make merchandise of you, OK, they're, they're, they're lying for their advantage, right? They're lying for their advantage, for their gain. 21 said the getting of treasures by a lying tongue. They're lying. They're promising you all these riches. They promise you all this prosperity. They promise you all that. And they know it doesn't even work like that. They know it's not going to happen. Oh, prosperity is going to happen. Your wealth is going to go to their hands. That's, all, that's the only, that's, that's, oh, it's going to be a transfer of wealth. That's the transfer right there. Your money into their pockets and they're lying to you, promise, uh, feeding or praying on your desire to get, to, to, to get wealth. And I understand you just want to have a better life. I get it. I understand. We all, we all want a more, you know, a better life, a little more comfortable and all that. I, I get it. I get it. You know, I get it. I work in the world. I got to do, you know, I understand. They got to work, got to take care of the family. So I get it. But you got people out there with a lying tongue, just tell you anything, just feed on your desires. Oh, you're going to get this, you're going to get the end. It doesn't work like that. 
okay? It doesn't work like that. Very, anytime you hear someone who gets overnight riches and all that, there's a thousand others who lost everything. Okay, for every one that hits it, boom, there's a thousand others, and, and I'm being conservative, okay? You hear about that one that hit rich, but you didn't hear about the other thousand that, that lost everything. Okay? Doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that, okay? So we're going to keep on going. Over to Jeremiah, chapter 9. Jeremiah 9, we're going to do 1 through 9. Jeremiah 9, 1 through 9. Let's look at it. Okay, still talking about lying tongue. Oh, that my head were waters, and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughters of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of the wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them. For they be all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. Okay, so he don't, he don't even want to be around the people, you understand? And they bend their tongues like their bow for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil, that they know not me, said the Lord. Listen, listen, see that? Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother, for every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. Okay? I experience that personally. Okay? I experience this personally. And they will deceive everyone, his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Thy inhabitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, says the Lord. Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them, for how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in heart he layeth his weight. Shall I not visit them for these things, said the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Are we, can we tell? Can, can, are you getting the impression that the Most High doesn't like someone with a lying, deceitful tongue? Are, are we starting to get that impression? I think he says, you know, hey, I'm far from that. Slandering yours, that, that's lying. You slander somebody and it's not true. That's lying on them. You speak about things you don't know for a fact. That's why he don't like tail bearers. You don't know for a fact that you're trying to slander someone. Watch that. Okay, let's, 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 let's look at this. Let's, one second, one second. Go back to three. Okay, now if I go to two, he said, um, Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging a place for wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from, from them. For they be all adulterers and assembly of treacherous men. He doesn't want to have anything to do with treacherous men. And of course, when we read further, he's talking about how they have a deceitful, lying tongue and slander. Are we, start, are we starting to get it? I hope it is starting to sink in with you a little. I hope it's starting to sink in to what, to what he's talking about. He said in three, he said, they bend their tongues like their bow of, of, for lies. Bend their tongues like their bow for lies. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. Okay, they, 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 they don't have that same energy when it's time for the truth. Oh, they're bold in their lives, but they don't have the same energy for truth. Okay. For they proceed from evil to evil. That's all they do every single day. Every single that's all they do. Go from one evil to another. And they know not me, said the Lord. No, they don't. No, they don't. Take heed every one of his neighbor, okay? Take heed, caution, and trust ye not in any brother, okay? For every brother will utterly supplant. Yep, experience that. And every neighbor will walk with slanders, okay? 
and they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Okay, do we under... You guys can finish reading that tonight. You, you can... This is the most high said, I don't like this lying. I don't like this deceitful tongue. I don't. This is the most high. I don't. This is what they do. Today we say, you know, there's certain narratives out there. And we, we believe in some narratives. We, we believe in some narratives out there. And we need to be careful of that. Because if it's not true, it can be detrimental to someone's reputation. And then they can hurt you. Because you are perpetuating it. You perpetuating the narrative if it's not true. Don't like a, a tongue that spew out deceit, deception, discord, lies, slander. Can't make it any more clear than that. Okay? I'm going to keep going. Let's go to uh, 2 Samuel. Let's go to 2 Samuel. And when we get to 2 Samuel, we're going to do uh, chapter 1, verse 1. 2 Samuel. Chapter 1, verse 1. 2 Samuel. Uh, where are we here? Da, 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 da. Now, it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziglag. It came even to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent and earth upon his head. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth and did obeisance. Okay. And David said unto him, From whence comest thou? And he said, And he said unto, uh, unto him, Out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. And David said unto him, How went the matter? And he basically said, Well, what happened? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered, that the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen and dead, and Saul and jo Jonathan, his son, are dead also. And David said unto the young man that told him, How knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan, his son, be dead? And the young man that told him said, As I happened by chance upon Mount uh, Gilboa, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear. And lo, the chariots and horse horsemen followed hard after him. Okay, so I want you to... Pay attention. And when he looked upon him, he uh, saw me and called unto me. And I answered, Here am I. And he said unto me, Who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. And he said unto me again, Stand, I pray thee, upon me and slay me, for anguish is come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. So I stood upon him and slew him, because I was sure that he could not live after that he had, was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought them hither unto my Lord. Mm, this is not going to be good. 11. Then David took hold of his clothes and rent them, and likewise all the men that were with him. And they mourned and wept and fastened until even for Saul and for Jonathan his son and for the people of the Lord, and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. And David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of the, uh, son of the, of the stranger and Amalekite. And David said unto him, How was thou not afraid to stretch forth thy hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? And David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. Listen, listen, listen to what happened. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head, for thy mouth has testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. Did it, the, the, guy, the, guy, the guy lied. The guy lied. He lied and said that he killed Saul. He didn't. He didn't. When we go back, we, if we go back, and you look at the story, he didn't kill Saul. 
So Saul wanted uh, Saul wanted his shield bearer to do it for him because he said, "I don't want these other people, you know, to get me and and and, and kill me and and all that." So you know, and he put his sword down and he fell on it, thrusted himself, and then the, the shield bearer he killed himself as well. But this guy wanted to take credit for it. He lied and said, hey, you know what? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I did it. I came up to him and he said, you know, hey, I want you to kill me because I still got life and I don't want these other people to kill me. And I'll, oh, you go ahead and kill me. So I went ahead and killed him. And I took his crown. I took his bracelet. And look, look, I came to, to bring it to you. And in that moment, the record skipped. And they was like, what? You, you, you killed him. Hmm. This is the king of Israel, the anointed. And why were you not afraid to even put your hands on him? All right, then. And we know what happened. And we know what happened. Lying. That lying, and it cost you. You lied about it, and it, it, it cost him his life. So we're gonna get into a few other things uh, with this. We're gonna talk about the uh, the shedding of innocent blood, and and and, and we're gonna continue this, right? This is gonna be part one of this two-part uh, lesson. Okay, it's gonna be part one of this two-part lesson. Okay, so we're gonna go to First Kings twenty-one. Okay, First Kings twenty-one. First Kings twenty-one. Okay, when we get to 21, I'm start at verse 1. 1 Kings 21. And we're going to look at uh, verse uh, 1 through 14. 1 Kings 21. And we're going to go 1 through 14. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spoke unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon him his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. Can you get the, uh, the imagery of that? I mean, Nadab, um, uh, you know, Ahab, I'm sorry. My goodness. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if I please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, And I will not give thee my vineyard. Now, now does it, doesn't it sound a little bit, it sounds a little bit like he's whiny and all this. I, I, I can't help, but in my brain, I hear the whiny voice, right? So let's go ahead and... And uh, read that back in five. He said, And uh, Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and he said unto him, Give me, I said unto him, uh, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, And I will not give thee my vineyard. It, it, I'm sorry, it sounds like whining to me, right? And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou not govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread and let thy heart be merry, and I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, uh, Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him, 
to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of the city, even the elders and the nobles who were uh, inhabitants of his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast and sat Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and to and stoned him with stones that he died. And in 14, he said, then they sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. Naboth is stoned and is dead. So again, one of the things that he hated is shedding innocent blood. And that's exactly what Jezebel did. Naboth did nothing wrong. Even when he said, I can't sell my father's inheritance. I can't sell it to you. That's just a simple, simple answer. That's just, that's how it was. Okay. It's supposed, you're supposed to leave an inheritance for your children. You're supposed to leave his father, Naboth's father, left him an inheritance, that vineyard. And Naboth wanted to keep it in the family. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And yet Jezebel, with the power of her husband, the king, Ahab, shed innocent blood. One of the things that the Lord hated, and we know Jezebel got, got, got she, she got what she had coming. So we already know that. Again, and, and we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to get all into it in, in, in the second part of this lesson. We're gonna get more into the shedding of innocent blood. I just want to start it. Okay, I want to start it, get it going, and then keep moving forward. Because we still gotta talk about the evil heart and mischief and false witness and all that. And discord. And we, we, we gotta get into all that. We got to get to the rest of the things that, you know, he hated. We touched on the pride and the lying tongue and the shedding, but we touched on three of them. We got to go and, and, and get the rest of them too. Okay. We got to get the rest of them too. So we're going to go ahead uh, and end it there. I just started with the shedding of his and blood. I'm not done. Look at the second part of this lesson. Okay. We're going to keep it going. Look at the second part of the lesson of the seven abominations unto God. So with that, I want you to, again, like, share, subscribe. The likes really help in the uh, algorithm and the YouTube algorithm to kind of push it up. Otherwise, it won't show anybody anything or whatever. Please check the uh, description box in the comment section down below uh, for the scriptures and, and any other little helpful links. It really helps out, you know, the ministry. And I really, really appreciate everything that you guys do. I appreciate you allowing me to uh, come into your home each Shabbat and teach what thus says the Lord. I hope somebody has been edified. Join me next week. So, until next time, search the scriptures and prove all things. Shalom, Israel.